Hey kids, it's Triple Feature Tuesday once again, and this week we're going to look at the Green Lantern Apology movies. I'm sorry. So I mean, I hate to be the one to break it to you, but 2011's uh, Green Lantern movie by Martin Campbell was just not that good. I wanted it to be good. I mean, prior to that, we just had, you know, a bunch of good Superman and Batman movies, and then, like, a couple not good Batman movies, and a couple good not Superman movies, and so, it's like, let's, you know, branch out into other things, and so Green Lantern, why not? I mean, I'm a bit more of a Flash guy, but I, you know, I don't dislike Green Lantern, but it's just, a lot of bad choices went into this Green Lantern movie, like, uh, making it about Hal Jordan who is about as interesting as cardboard. Changing the design of the costume, which, uh, sure, you have to change it to be in a different medium, but why was it totally CGI and living and just kind of, like, ever-moving plasma goo all the time? Parallax, making the Parallax a demon, which admittedly is from the comics, but it's not something I liked in the comics, and it didn't really translate well, and, you know, making Peter Sarsgaard our earthbound bad guy with a hydrocephalic head. It just, it felt kind of cruel when Hal was beating the shit out of him, because, yeah, that guy's got problems, so. You know, at the same time, you can't fault the movie for embracing the source material. It wanted to make a Green Lantern movie, and it made a Green Lantern movie, goddammit. And I appreciate that. And unfortunately, DC Warner Brothers learned all of the wrong lessons from that movie. It wasn't that they, you know made it too comic booky that made it fail. It's not that it was bright and sunny that they made it fail. It's just, it was a bad movie. It just wasn't that interesting. And it was long. Standard DC comic book movie trope of uh, superheroes quitting. I just, I don't get it myself. Why do they always quit? Batman, uh, the uh, Chris Nolan Batman movies, always talking about quitting. And then he ups and quits for eight years in the third one. Superman, uh, Man of Steel, always talking about, you know, maybe Earth doesn't need me. Maybe I don't, you know what, maybe, maybe I don't need Earth. And uh, Superman Returns, he, like, goes on vacation for five or so years. And then Hal Jordan, the man, like, supposedly the most fearless human being in the DC Comics, just gets, uh, gets gun shy in the middle of the, mo in the movie and goes, no, nope, this is too scary, I'm out. Only to come back again for reasons, I guess? I don't remember that well. This movie was not good. But three of the actors in the movie have gone out of their way to apologize for this movie by making three of the greatest comic book movies ever made. I'm talking about, like, game-changing, holy shit, this is good comic books movies. And so, you know, if they had to be pushed to the, to the breaking point by making Green Lantern, well, maybe Green Lantern served its purpose to give us these other three great movies. The order of the movies is just going to be in chronological order that they were released because they're so comparable in terms of quality, uh, idiosyncrasy, and just getting the source material that I, I can't really rank them. You can put these in literally any order and it's going to work no matter what because they're all great. And they're not all great because they're Marvel movies. They're all great because they put the effort in and made them great. It's like I, this, this weird false dichotomy where it's just like, well, you only like Marvel movies or you only like DC movies. Well, I'm dying for good DC movies and it kills me that they don't make them. I don't like Marvel movies because they're Marvel. I like them because they're good. Maybe work on that. Our menu is going to include Deadpool, Thor Ragnarok, and Black Panther. Ryan Reynolds had a lot to apologize for with the Green Lantern movie, but not nearly as much as he had for the X-Men Origins Wolverine movie, in which he first played Wade Wilson, the Merc with a Mouth, in a extraordinarily bad movie. That just, man, look, the X-Men movies aren't particularly good. There are discrete moments in all of them that are amazing. Don't get me wrong, even X-Men The Last Stand has a lot of bits that I would like to watch again, just because, hey... It's X-Men, and that's a thing from the X-Men that I like. But by and large, they're, you know, just not well made. And then came Deadpool. And Deadpool just was Deadpool. Ryan Reynolds wanted to make this movie so hard for so long that he kept bothering people and bothering people and bothering people until they finally just said, Here, here's a little pile of money. Go make your stupid movie. We're going to release it in February because it's going to tank. And then we never have to hear it about, hear about it again. And so, they made it, 
word of mouth got around and it had the biggest opening and or made the most money in February. Yeah, it had the biggest opening in February up until, you know, Black Panther. But we'll get there. It did well because it was just Deadpool. Like, I've been reading Deadpool since uh, Joe Kelly's run in 1997. And I remember when people were making fun of me because it was just, this is stupid. Is it funny? Is it serious? Is it dramatic? What, what is this supposed to be? And it's like, Guys, it's all the things. You can have all the things in one book. You can have comics and movies that are tonally all over the place, which makes them great because the world is all over the place. But so Ryan Reynolds, the guy that was born to play Deadpool, finally got to play Deadpool for real. And I mean, he's just Deadpool. It's, he's got the mask on almost all the time. When he doesn't, he is hideous to look at. I mean, as hideous as you can make Ryan Reynolds. Let's be real. He's not as, like, tumory gross as he is in the comic book, but, you know, he's pretty gross looking. And everybody around him is great. Well, Marina Baccarin, TJ Miller, Leslie Uggams, Ed Screen, Gina Carano. They're just all perfect for the roles and perfect for the movie, and it's written so well. And, man, Colossus. We'd had, like, two and a half movies with Colossus, and this is the first one where they actually do Colossus right. Just make him an adorable big Russian asshole. I mean, I say asshole. He's just a perpetually nice guy. He's not a douche. He's just a... Come on, Piotr. I mean, let's, let's just go do the thing. I'd like to believe that Deadpool was a big game changer for comic book movies because it's like, we've been creeping towards it. I think like the biggest step toward in this direction prior to Deadpool was Guardians of the Galaxy in terms of, you know, we can embrace the source material as much as we possibly want. We don't have to make this fit the real world we will just make the real world audience fit this deadpool it is tonally exactly a deadpool comic book there's tragedy there's comedy i mean they never take a minute to stop to not do a dick or fart joke in this movie and it's wonderful the soundtrack the action just the comic they just they had the outfit He's wearing the Deadpool outfit. It's not, you know, like in the Avengers where it's like, oh, this is, you know, a real worldy looking thing. No, you just look at him and he's just Deadpool. And that's it. And that's what makes it wonderful. Next up, we have Thor Ragnarok. Whereas uh, Ryan Reynolds played Hal Highball uh, Jordan in Green Lantern, Taika Waititi played Thomas Kalmaku, a, a sidekick character from the Green Lantern comics who used to have a very... Uh, offensive racist nickname and uh, you know despite not being the biggest part of that movie I, gu I guess he felt he needed to fix things too and so when they gave them the opportunity to direct Thor Ragnarok he jumped in feet both feet first and guys have you not seen Thor Ragnarok yet we had these Thor movies and like the all I, I enjoy all the Marvel movies to varying degrees and, but the, the, the Thor movies in the MCU have been sort of lacking. Like, whereas others hit their stride quicker and get, like, uh, what they want the movies to be easier, Thor has always had trouble because they, like, they sort of are half in, half out. They want to embrace the Thor comics, but they don't want to embrace the Thor comics because people might get weirded out by the whole god thing and or just like super duper epic space fantasy. And they've, as a result, the, the, the movies have suffered. I mean, the first movie, great introduction to Thor and Loki and uh, the various side characters, but sort of just not a good story in terms of, I, I, I've never bought the character arc for Thor in the first one, where he just, you know, one night, and hey, everything, I'm the nicest human being now. And it's just never worked for me. Thor, the Dark World, uh, built on the fun stuff, but, I mean, if you could tell me who the bad guys were and what they were trying to do, I'll give you five dollars. And you can't. And this is a crime, because the bad guys were played by uh, Adewale and Christopher Eccleston. You know, Doctor Who. Those were the bad guys. They're incredible actors, and they could have done whatever you wanted, but they just are speaking this goofy, fake elfin language, and they have motivations that don't tell the story of my life. But then we had Thor Ragnarok, which all is like Taika Waititi, the guy behind, or one of the guys behind What We Do in the Shadows and Hunt for the Wilder People, Eagle vs. Shark, and the writers took Thor and made it fun. 
like Thor, what, what is impressive, much like Deadpool, there is an intermingling of comedy and uh, drama, high stakes danger that is woven together so seamlessly that you forget uh, how funny it is at parts and or you uh, forget that you're supposed to be worried, but then the danger is brought right back into stark relief and you're worried about everybody. But then there's another joke, and it's wonderful. Because in between uh, a bunch of the Avengers movies, was, uh, people started to notice that Chris Hemsworth is a comedic genius, and so they just let him do what he need. Uh, they just let him be funny and be like the big, hunky, sexy, funny man that he is, and he pulls it off so easily. While, again, simultaneously being a serious character. I, I just... Uh, I'm just endlessly impressed by this. We finally had character growth, I mean, for Thor, for Loki, uh, had a lot of growth for the Hulk. Man, letting the Hulk talk. Finally! I mean, don't get me wrong, I love all the, you know, homages to the Lou Ferrigno Incredible Hulk, but the Hulk talks in the comics. He has always talked to the comics. He's always had a big vocabulary in the comics, mainly because Stan doesn't know, Stanley doesn't know how to write a guy monosyllabically. They let Mark Ruffalo do so much more with the Hulk and really portray him as, like, the giant powerful child that he is, and have a nude scene. Kate Blanchett with superpowers. Guys. What have we been doing? Why did we never give her superpowers before? She is just stunning throughout the whole thing. Tessa Thompson as Valkyrie. Uh, Idris Elba barely has any lines in the movie, but every scene he's in, he's just so dynamic as Heimdall. Taika Waititi plays Korg because, you know, he's funny, and Korg can be funny. And uh, the fights, the action, the embracing of the Jack Kirby-ness of Thor. It's just like, I, you know... I'm worried that we'll never see another actual just straight-up Thor movie again, but, you know, if this is the last one to go out on as we, uh, you know, are sort of wrapping up, or we're in the middle section of uh, Phase 3 of the Marvel Universe, this is not a bad Thor movie to go, uh, to go out on. Because, again, embracing the source material and going nuts with it and having fun with it, this is what we want! Don't want overwrought obvious diatribes about what superheroes would be like in the real world. Because you can do that more subtly. You can do that more optimistically. Watch the Win Captain America, The Winter Soldier. That movie is all about drone strikes. I'm actually working on another triple feature that is all about um, uh, superheroes dealing with the Patriot Act, and it's going to be great. But in the, me but in the meantime, Thor! And not for nothing, why did it take us three Thor movies to figure out we should put Immigrant Song in it? And finally, we have Black Panther, which I'm not going to go into too much detail about because you should really go out and go see it if you're, like, the one person that hasn't seen it yet. The movie is making all of the money because it should, because it embraces everything that made the Black Panther comics cool, and it goes even farther because it just embraces all the things that make uh, African culture cool. It's just that everybody looks like they're supposed to be that in that movie. They look like they come from the from uh, all the different African nations, and it's wonderful to see all of the culture, rituals, dances, uh, modes of dress that are usually just you know a five minute throwaway. Oh look, we have gone to a foreign land, and isn't it quaint? And instead, it are all given the respect that they're due and embraced and mixed in with Afrofuturism and just this bright shining example of what we could all be if, you know, we had a gajillion dollars and access to technology that doesn't really exist. But if we did, we should just be benevolent with it. Because that that's what make that's what the great message of Black Panther is at the end of the day. You can't we can't keep building borders. We can't separate each other. If somebody needs help we have to go help them, because that's the only way we're going to survive this. And by this, I mean everything. That's what they mean, because it's awesome. And in the meantime, he's just, you know, Chadwick Boseman in a giant cat suit beating the shit out of everybody. And Michael B. Jordan just stealing the whole movie. Or actually, no, Michael B. Jordan stealing as much of the movie as he can uh, when all of the women are not on screen, which is, I mean, uh, Lupita Nyong'o, uh, Letitia Wright... Uh, Danette Guerrera, and of course, Angela Bassett, who was in Green Lantern. See, you thought I'd forgotten about the Green Lantern angle for this whole video, didn't you? But no, she played Amanda the Wall Waller, the head of the Suicide Squad, and or your go-to government liaison in the DC Universe. And though she did not wear a fat suit, 
it's okay because, you know, Angela Bassett. But now we get to see her as uh, T'Challa's mother, and she's just so majestic and wonderful. And it just, it reminded me a lot of how I just always wanted her to play Storm in the X-Men movies. And even though that didn't happen, we sort of get African goddess queen Angela Bassett because she's amazing. And everybody's amazing. There is not one bad part of this movie. There's not one bad performance in this movie. God damn it. Why haven't you gone and seen Black Panther? It'll, like, wash the taste of Green Lantern completely out of your mouth, along with uh, Thor, Ragnarok, and Deadpool. Honestly, again, you could watch them in any order, and they're all going to be great. I mean, Black Panther is definitely going to kick everything else's ass because it's new and we haven't seen it a zillion times. But at the end of the day, these are all amazing comic book movies that embrace the weirdness of the comic and the quirkiness, have fun with it, and, you know have serious stakes throughout the whole thing. You care about these characters, and it's maybe that's part of what made Green Lantern not work. Who cares about any of the people in that movie? It's just, ugh. But it's okay, we don't have to think about that ever again, because they're never going to make another one, uh, or at least not with Hal Jordan. We'll see what the Justice League stuff ends up with, if they even continue it, because those movies are terrible. But not on this side. On this side, we're embracing you know, the, our comic bookness and having fun with it. And I can't wait to see a zillion more. I'll see you guys in probably two weeks. I think we're doing a two-week schedule from now on. So, like, no more false expectation. Every two weeks, you get a dose of Tommy.